It looks like he likes mints. Oh, he's got a friend, and they like to talk about sports. Nice. He drinks his water out of a refillable bottle. Gotta stay hydrated. Okay, it's 5.15, and he's just getting started to pack his stuff up. Hey, hey, that's enough. We're not doing that anymore. Live from 1SEO, taking control. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 54 of Taking Control. Uh, I'm Anthony Kane, an SEO strategist here at 1SEO. I'm joined by our director of content and social media marketing, Bernie Owilla. What's up? Bernie, thanks for coming on. I think you may have been on a few Marketing I've Matters. a few times, Anthony. Yeah, a few Marketing Matters episodes in the past, but we're excited to have you on, and the reason why we have Bernie on today uh, is because I'm sure, as a lot of you guys know, there were some big changes that have been rolling out to Facebook. Um, Facebook's been making it pretty known that they're that they're trying to, to steer the ship in the right direction as far as ethically it goes. But we'll we'll get into all that. Uh, that's pretty much going to be the core topic of this week's episode. Is going to be getting into how these changes kind of affect uh, everybody from a user standpoint, from a business standpoint. Uh, we're going to get into all that. Before we do, a few housekeeping items as usual. Uh, the first one being that One SEO is of course hiring uh, as usual. Feel free to check out all of our open positions at 1SEO.com slash careers. A link will be right below as well. Uh, but we're pretty much hiring for positions across the board. Uh, SEO, PPC, I know uh, social and content are always looking. Social media, anybody with any kind of paid social media experience, anybody that knows a little bit about content marketing, um, anyone that knows how to do keyword research, whatever, just experienced people. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Bernie mentioned experience because that's certainly a plus. So if you are mid to high level experience in SEO, PPC, content, social media marketing, anything like that, we, we definitely would like to hear from you. And on the other side of things, uh, we're always looking to expand on the IT side. So IT desktop support or business development specialists, anything like that. Uh, feel free to check out all of our open positions again at 1SEO.com. So Bernie, one of the things I like to do on the show when I have a fellow coworker on is to kind of say, what, give one or two of your favorite perks of the office or one of the, one or two of the favorite things about working at 1SEO. Um, you know, we get culture a lot. We get the, the haircuts, the basketball court. What are some of your favorite? Just doing really good work all the time for all our clients, for the agency, for uh, just working with great people too. So Yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's, a, it's an exciting space to be in too because a lot of the times it's a moving target. Mm -hmm. Things are evolving just like how we're going to be talking about Facebook today. So without further ado, uh, Bernie and I will jump right into this week's topic. So Bernie, uh, as you know, I'm sure because you, you and your team have done some pretty extensive research into these changes that have been rolled out. You guys put together an awesome blog that's actually on our website and is also linked yep. below uh, in this episode, which will be great to kind of uh, give you some ideas of, of some of the things that have been going on there. Just kind of give a brief understanding or background of what some of the bigger changes were when Facebook rolled all this out. All right, so in response to the uh, Cambridge Analytica data breach controversy, mm -hmm. Facebook is getting rid of a lot of different um, targeting options that they have in their ads. So where before you could target people by things like what kind of car they drive or other specific behaviors like um, credit cards, um, how much their houses are worth, or really any kind of information that Facebook got from a third party, you, right. can't, you can't target anymore. And some people are kind of reacting in a way that's like, you know, they're, they're a little scared, they're not sure how to proceed in the future, but we think, um, especially since we are Facebook partners and we do deal with them all sure. the time, this is gonna make things more competitive for especially small businesses and people who might not have the kind of money that you know some of the bigger brands do to play around in this space. Yeah, that's a great so, point. I think I think a key a few key things that you mentioned in there. One, I, I think it's important to understand too that the kind of targeting you can do on Facebook in comparison to a lot of the other platforms, mm -hmm. just because you can get really granular on Facebook as it is. I mean, super the, granular. The targeting yeah. options are ridiculous. Yeah. Even when you you go in and you start to play around, like you could. Essentially, yeah. target some really specific. Things. And even if you don't want to target people by you know behaviors or any kind of demographic information available to you on Facebook, you can target by geography with pin drops, right. and you can also remarket to them. Uh, but yeah, basically, any information that Facebook hadn't gotten from their own users and things that hadn't occurred on Facebook itself is the kind of stuff that you can't target anymore as an advertiser. Exactly. Yeah, I think that was the that was the other key thing I wanted to mention was you mentioned the term third party and obviously Facebook's tracking everything we do. If you like a photo or you watch 30 seconds of a video or whatever it might be, they're collecting information on that. They're serving you up things based on that information. But you mentioned 
the third party thing and, and how it makes the space a lot more competitive because hey, you know, a, yeah, a guy selling sneakers with one store can't compete with a Nike who can buy all this information and buy exactly. all this data. So. So, so anytime you have something like that happen, it, gives, it puts more of the emphasis on your creativity and your kind of strategy and how you approach the audience that you're trying to market to. So right. instead of just buying, you know, that placement, you have to kind of get a little, a little weird and think and think outside the box. Sure. Yeah, and I think you know also to kind of rope everything in with with Mark Zuckerberg and, and the direction Facebook's going, they obviously feel a, a sense of urgency and they responsibility, a, a responsibility yeah. for the community to to kind of bring people together. That's what Facebook was originally created for. I'm sure you guys have seen the commercials where. Uh, you know how it all started with a like and then a friend request or whatever that commercial is. But mm -hmm. but the idea is they're trying to get back to that. So I think. Um, well, yeah, they want to get back to it without compromising what the people like us are doing on there. Exactly. You know, trying to and take advantage of you know that platform as a space to generate whether it's revenue or leads or clicks or awareness. So it's and a lot of people rely on that. So they don't want to like lose that aspect of their community as well. And they've made some great steps as far as becoming an advertising right. platform from one where people haven't really messed around with it to now they're a serious player in the advertising space. It's like, and it's it's certainly a platform that you want to be on at this point. Yeah, too. people go there to buy specific things too sometimes. You know, and some I mean, people all know about Facebook ads. Some people they're not as reviled as I guess a lot of people think they are. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, People sometimes go to Facebook and they, they do like looking at the ads. They do like seeing the Facebook stores. You know, they, they use it as a, as a place to buy things or to kind of, you know, interact with brands or, or other things they don't otherwise have access to. So, yeah, and if Facebook gets rid of all that stuff and goes back to specifically what it was, they lose that part of their control. Yeah, certainly. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that you can target so specifically. You know, you're, if you're seeing ads, it's likely that it is relevant to you. You know, it's not just companies throwing, throwing darts at a board. Mm -hmm. um, if you're seeing ads, and that's why I think a lot of people like to, to, to look at the ads. But the other aspect of it is just the amount of time that people spend on Facebook in general. I mean, it's if you talk about advertising where people are, you know, the sh we've talked about the shift from commercials and, and TV and all that in the past. But the idea is people are sitting on Facebook. Anytime. You know, you talk about a commercial during a show, yeah. you look at <clears throat> Facebook's usage spike, it go up because everyone picks up their phone during commercial and goes on Facebook. So yeah. it's almost as if... You know, you, you see that massive shift there, and it's certainly, I think, a platform that's that people need to be paying attention to. It is something people need to pay attention to. Um, like you were saying, people are on there constantly, 24-7, whether they're at work or it's a commercial break or it's just Facebook doesn't take a break. Yeah, so definitely. So there is tons more about this uh, in our blog. We've got things you can download to get to get the full scoop, to get lists, uh, solution strategies, and, and, and more uh, on this blog. So again, the link will be right below. But before we, we kind of uh, get into the digital buzz for this week, Bernie and I want to pass it over to Kim and Sarah, who are two of our social media specialists here, are going to break down on the whiteboard this week kind of some solutions, some strategies that you can take um, that are still going to be completely effective even with all of these changes. Uh, so guys, please take it away. Thanks, Anthony. So now that Facebook is taking away third-party targeting options, marketers are now required to find other ways to target users on Facebook when they run ads. So this is the changes, and this is your toolbox that you'll use. Kim is going to start with our first big tool, which is custom audiences on Facebook. So starting off with custom audiences, um, using the Facebook pixel, we can collect lots of data, um, like website traffic within the, the last 180 days, um, video views within like uh, the people who watched it for 10 seconds, or people who viewed a certain percentage of the video. Um, as well as collecting website traffic for people who visited the website using other ads. Um, also, contact forms. So anyone who has an e-commerce website who has you know, previous customers who already shopped on their website can create a list using custom audiences to also target those people. Um, also moving forward, there's other platforms we can use aside from just Facebook. So I'm going to pass it back over to Sarah. So, the big three, other than Facebook, that most marketers will lean towards are Twitter, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. And between Pinterest and Twitter, you're still getting a pretty decent, cheaper budget for advertising. When you start to move into the B2B and LinkedIn sector, the price will start to go up, so marketers should definitely be aware of that when they're setting up their budget for the monthly billing. With Pinterest especially, you still have a lot of the great options like creating really visually stimulating content and putting that out for users to then save for later and click on it for traffic, they can engage with it and 
that will also allow your ads to be a little bit more evergreen. Instead of just when the ad is running, the pin will still be saved in a person's board even after the ad is no longer being promoted. So along with that as well is Facebook events. So everybody knows that you can create an event on Facebook, but did you know that you can put money behind it? So now um, you can also focus your, your efforts towards engagement for event responses on Facebook. So having more people you know, respond to your event, whether they can go or they're interested, they'll get reminders um, of that. And also if you comment on that event page, people will get notifications. So that's a really good way of letting people know that promotion or sales coming up. So it's really good for some e-commerce clients or you know, service industries who have like events that they want to promote that way. So along with that too, there's a Facebook interest targeting with saved audiences that you can also use. Yeah, just because behaviors and demographics and those types of things are going away doesn't mean that interests are going anywhere. You can still use saved audiences, don't think that you can't, because interests like, you know, think about people who like cats, people who like certain movies, certain genres of literature. Those types of concepts, interests, are still huge for targeting. And with that being said, saved audiences will still be great if you're trying to target somebody from a cold perspective. Custom audiences are great for when you are trying to target people that have already warmed up to your brand, but interest is still when you want to create a new group of people. If you're running a brand awareness campaign, interest targeting is going to be the way to get people to understand and realize that your brand exists and it's out there and you need to engage with this group. Yeah, it's important to keep in mind that the third party targeting isn't taking away all the demographics and all the behaviors. So it's not the time to panic, it's the time to start planning to move forward. So the dates that we should be looking at is August 14th, that's the last date that we're going to be able to target those certain third party um, behaviors and demographics. And then August 1st, if, even if you have an ad running, it will still continue to run, but August, I mean, October 1st, that's when it will stop for you. So if you have saved audiences with those demographics and behaviors in them, don't just delete them and start fresh from scratch. You have until October 1st to reevaluate your plan. And with all of these tools in your toolbox, you can still be super successful on Facebook, but definitely start to move towards these other platforms to make sure that you are hitting as many touch points with these users as possible. Know your audience, know your demographic, know what platforms they're engaging with, and hit them there. Welcome back to this week's episode of Technologically Speaking. This week, yet again, another data breach is in the news. This is uh, Time Hop. Time Hop is, you probably recognize it from seeing it on Facebook. It's one of those reminders, a third-party plugin that you can utilize that will show you something that happened three years ago, four years ago, five years ago. More than 21 million users had their email addresses and their names uh, compromised. Out of those 21 million users, just shy of 5 million, I believe, also had a phone number compromised and hacked. Luckily, TimeHop was on top of it, and they stopped it before they were able to get all the information off of their systems. However, it's just another reminder that your data is out there. Make sure that you're using multiple levels of uh, authentication and passwords whenever possible. Don't just check off that box and ignore two-step authentication. Two-step authentication is an extra way to help protect your data. TimeHop now offers it as a service starting July 5th. So you're able to have like a text message sent to you whenever you log into your account to verify that it's really you. We'll catch you next week on Technologically Speaking. Yeah! Okay. Digital Buzz, we're back! Here's Beej and Rach, number one on the list. Google Speed Update. Guys, you've had all this time to make your sites fast. Now Google's like, you know what? Our update's rolling out, whether you did it or not. Yep, there's no more time to prepare. They've given everybody ample time with notices and updates and things like that. So if you're not ready now, sheesh, better. Best of luck to you. Yeah. Guys, get your butts in gear and let's get those sites nice and fast. Google says you have to do it, so you pretty much have to play. They don't own the internet, but they own the internet. Number two on the list, Amazon is opening up another Amazon Go store. The first one popped up in Seattle. Uh, it's where you could go and sensors and cameras would pick up what you're uh, picking up off the shelves. Uh, they would charge your account. You just freely walk out the door. There is no cashier, there is no nothing. It's just in and out, I think, for like a little, uh, you know, one of those circular things. 
But other than that, they're opening a second one in Seattle, and this one's uh, prospected to be super large compared to this one. It's really going to be, you know, a display of how big can we make this, and then can we scale it out to other cities. So they're still piloting it, uh, and Seattle's the hotbed for it, for obvious reasons. That's where Amazon is right now. But we, uh, we have something to look forward to. Yeah, like here's hoping they come to Philly. So with that being said, a little fun fact, uh, I think Amazon dwindled it down to its top 20 locations and yeah. Pittsburgh and Philadelphia are in the mix. So mm -hmm. maybe something to look forward to, but don't get your hopes up yet. Uh, number three on the list, Snapchat is building a visual search that actually brings back Amazon products. Can't get enough Amazon, never will. I can't get enough Amazon. But for all of those millennials and Gen Zers that can't put Snapchat down, you can actually take a picture of a product, it brings you back information that tries to sell you based on Amazon's inventory. So uh, kind of a neat thing, but I think in my opinion, Snapchat's dying and they know it, so they're trying to throw everything at the wall. We hear this every time we talk about Snapchat, BJ thinks it's dead, I kind of think it's dead, but BJ and I were talking beforehand and he made a really good point. This is Google's, or this is their way to fight Google Lenses, you know, you just take a picture of a purse you like um, with your Google Lens, it comes up on Google Shopping, here it is, but with Snapchat, Snapchat and Amazon. Do we think they'll, you know, they'll succeed in that relationship, do we think it'll crash and burn? Everything's kind of up in the air, but these are like very major steps for Amazon, just in time for Prime Day as well. So just snaps for Amazon. We're taking over, as always. Snaps for Amazon. Guys, with that being said, uh, we really don't know what to expect here. Uh, it's just in the works. We don't really know uh, the breadth of it all. But at the end of the day, Snapchat is still the place to go to super those cats on your face. Guys, thank you for your time today. I'm Beach. This is Rach. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, guys. All right, thank you guys so much. Very insightful stuff this week on the Digital Buzz. And that pretty much wraps us up for episode 54 of Taking Control. Bernie, thank you so much for being Thanks on for this Thanks for having me, Anthony. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody, we'll see you guys next week for episode 55. So have a great weekend, and we'll see you then.